we're here yeah. and we continue to grow. Yeah. And you know, and you know, the next sister that comes in as well, she'll get in. You know, she'll be able to bond, you know, with us and grow with us as well. But like I said, a lot of people. You know, and that's and I and I think the most high that's nothing that we've ever experienced where we like, oh y'all know y'all just doing that for the camera. Yes, and, fake. And, and I I'm not thank God that we never experienced that. Shabu. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? As Judah. You gotta talk to the I'm a pawn in this game of life. We call chess that word that manifests. Dear Lord, I try my best to break the chains of flesh. Man gone now. All right, shalom, shalom. You already know who this is. I'm y'all Judah, aka Judah the Shooter. Uh, we got another one. So uh, before I go ahead and bring in my wives, I just wanted to let you all know we definitely appreciate you all. Definitely please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to book them for counsel, you can definitely do that. Um, if you want to book us all for counsel, you can definitely do that as well. You hear my wives playing in the background. Um, here they go playing. Every time we do a video, they get to playing. If you could just see what they're doing, trying to make me laugh, but it's not going to work. All right. It's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them in. Um, sisters, uh, I know you all going to enjoy this. And they're over there playing again. Um, <laughs> sisters, I know you're going to enjoy this because you've been asking. I'm not going to laugh. I'm not editing this, so this shit is gonna stay. That's fine. So anyway, oh God, sisters have been asking to <laughs> do that. <laughs> sisters, <laughs> I'm good. I'm sisters, good. you have been wanting to know. What it's like <laughs> coming into uh, a poly union? It's miserable. No. <laughs> um, so they're gonna go ahead and attempt to uh, give you all some understanding. So yeah, y'all keep that same energy. So with that, uh, without further ado, here they go. <laughs> <laughs> y'all play all day <laughs> it wouldn't have been crazy if it wasn't even recording yeah. <laughs> it hurts <laughs> oh man if it wasn't even recorded that would be funny that is funny alright so we're gonna go ahead and get started ladies and gents so you all can do y'all introduction of course and you already know youtube.com slash house of Judah. All right, do y'all think? Shalom, we're the sister wives of the house of Judah. You may know our Lord is Judah the shooter. Go ahead and hit that bell, like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell. Ding. <laughs> to receive notifications when we upload new videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, So how y'all want to do this? Do y'all want to read from the uh, actual message, or do y'all wanna, you know, wing it? Like, I mean, do y'all wanna, do y'all wanna do it like how, like how we did when we was on the beach? You know, kinda read it as we go. Do y'all want me to read it? Do y'all wanna read it? Um, how do y'all wanna do that? And, um, and they even um, had notes too, so um, definitely, um, you know, go to some of those notes if y'all need to as well, because this is definitely a mouthful. You can read it. Okay, I can definitely read it. All right, all good. All right, so um, so basically the topic is about uh, the incoming sister wife. Um, 
you do have couples out there who are seeking polygyny. They're seeking a sister wife or um, sometimes a wife. You hear she may be looking for a co-wife for her husband. Let's say co-wife, not threesomes and orgies. So we don't condone that. So, But anyway, um, you do have some sisters that are afraid. They're afraid of something new. They're afraid to try the lifestyle of polygyny. Now, we know and understand that polygyny isn't for everyone, but monogamy isn't either. So we also understand that also. So some, sometimes, you know, you get some sisters that may be on the fence and they may be, once again, afraid to go ahead and do the uh, poly thing because they may feel uncomfortable, something new to them. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'll go ahead and read. So um, you wanna read the whole thing first or do y'all wanna address it as we go? Wanna read the whole thing first? I'm gonna split it up. Okay, wait. Which one y'all want me to do? Like how we did on we was on the beach. Like I read a read first, and, and then we addressed what was Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, that's that way fine. All right. Or do y'all want me to read it first and then split it up? No, you can. Uh, okay, cool. All right. So here we go. So um, it says um. Here y'all go. Are y'all ready, bro? Yes, King. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, it says, I feel uncomfortable coming into a polygynous marriage. I don't know if I would be a great fit. And I don't know if I would get along with the sister wives because I'm so different from them that it seems. So I guess we'll deal with that first. Or do you want me to keep reading? Yes, so you want me to keep reading? No, no, we can stop that. Okay, go ahead. Do your thing. So once again, this is a sister who feels uncomfortable. Um, this is a brother who obviously has wives already, and she feels uncomfortable because obviously she's looking at herself as being different from them, and she don't know she'll get along with them. So what do we tell a sister like that? Let's get it. I guess I'll go first. <clears throat> so, I, I, a sister like that, I would basically let her know or uh, state to her that you have to think about it. Everybody's personality is different. Take me and my sisters. We're definitely different, but we're similar in the same way. That's why my husband chose us because he saw something similar in each and one of us. So, you have to realize that your, your, the man that's recording sees something in you that will bond well you could be the glue that holds them together you know what I'm saying but if you come in with a defeated per a, a defeated mentality it's not gonna work I take I let's let's step back and take it to some words that you may understand imagine you're on the playground right you're in kindergarten first grade whatever you imagine you're on the playground and you see some girls that you want to really want to play with but you don't know how to address them what did you do you didn't have any fears in kindergarten first grade you went up there and say hey What's up? I'm such and such. Let's play. And there you go. You made a new best friend. It's the same <laughs> way. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same way. So you have to think about think about it as these not sisters that are sharing the same husband. But think about these as your sisters on a day to day basis. If you are at a feast day or if you're at just just cordially meeting somebody. You're going to show that sister love. You're going to address that sister. You're not going to think in back of your mind, oh, what if she doesn't like me because I don't have a fringes? No, you're going to approach her and say, hey, so Shalom, you know, I'm such and such, you know, and go from there. Absolutely. All right. Who's next? Um, I would say, you know, of course, <coughs> not to really come into the situation with, a negative mindset thinking you know oh this sister is gonna you know think this about me or you know I'm not gonna fit in because you know I'm this way or everybody in this world is different everybody has different personalities everybody everybody is different so I will come into the into the union with um, you know being myself just be yourself you know that sister is you know should be should embrace you and you know, accept you like any other sister, you know, rather is, you know, a sister that, you know, 
that she knew and some uh, a sister that she's you know trying to get to know you know she'll get to know that sister and love that sister and shalom that sister embrace that sister it shouldn't be no different because you are coming into the household so just because you have a different personality doesn't that doesn't mean anything come into the household as you are and be you that sister is going to love you for you the most high put you in that situation for a reason so that's that's your test so don't come into the situation thinking negative and you know, oh, they're not gonna like me. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sisters took my answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so kind. I agree with them. All in all, um, not to come into the situation with a negative mindset. Um, obviously, there's a reason that the guy that you are dealing with chose you and there's a reason why he feel that you will be a fit in his household um i just have faith i guess and you know push forward be willing and open and like my sister said be yourself because there's no better way you know to get to know somebody other than being yourself yeah and absolutely because um and again even at the end of that point um and just in case if anybody wants to chime in on this, uh, Judy kind of already did. Um, but um, it said, I don't know if they would either cast me out or embrace me. So I'm looking at it. This is a sister that's coming in with fear, you know. So you're coming in with that type of mindset. Then, yeah, it could, it could, it can go sideways, even on both ends, because you might find yourself being standoffish, you know, kind of got your guard up, if you will. And they may be looking at it the same way because they seeing that, you know, there's something... That seems a little off about you, you know, and that might ruin your chances of them seeing you from a pure heart or a pure mindset or from a clean slate because you're too busy, you know, having your guard up. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be cautious. I'm not saying that because you're going into a new situation, just like they may be, you know, have some level of caution. So I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is you want to go into it with a great mindset, a positive positive spirit you know and hope and pray that they also have a positive spirit as well all right so um did y'all want to say something else or you want me to go to me yeah um so it's two things with with that as well you have to if you so if you come in with a negative mindset you you already counting yourself out uh me personally i would take it as like take my husband for example he'll court 100 women at one time but only one person gonna make it or maybe two you know that'll meet, make it to the point where they're actually meeting us. Say that again. So I don't think they heard you. Yeah, you have to realize a man can be can be courting as many <clears throat> as many women as he he wants to at that time, just to weed out, and maybe only one, maybe two. It's like getting into the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> everybody don't, ain't gonna make it. It's only two thirds. Mm-hmm. So you have to realize, like, if you get to the point where you're actually meeting the wives, then it's like. Man, okay, okay. Let's let's go ahead and, and and make this shake. But you also have to realize this is your test too, because a lot of women talk a good game when it comes to polygyny. Mm. They say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. I want to do it." Mm-hmm. But then when you get in that situation, your flesh takes over, and you can't handle him being intimate with another woman in front of you. Mm. So this is your test. It's kind of like a. I mean, cut you. It's like a, the saying I've always say. People when. Um, People are in love with the idea of polygyny and not necessarily the lifestyle and culture. But go ahead. Yeah, and if you count yourself out, then you've already failed the test. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. So um, once again, she said, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if they would either cast me out or embrace me. But anyway, it says, how should the first wife treat the incoming wife that comes in? So I guess that's more so you first, Judy. Uh, how should you? How should you treat? The incoming wife that's coming in. Um, you always want to know the first wife. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> going back to the first question, that 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 that, that sister should definitely um, embrace that sister. Um, welcome her into the household. She should definitely be walking in the fruits of the spirit when that sister is coming is coming into the household. She should be welcoming her. Um, you know, showing her how things are ran, Lo- you know, loving her, um, 
loving her I'm, as far as, you know, loving her as, you know, you would want someone to love you. You wouldn't want anybody to treat you any other kind of way. You wouldn't want anybody to treat you contrary to what love is according to the Bible. So, again, embrace her. Um, show her love and unity. Show her how how your family is ran, the things that go on in your family. So that's what the things you should be doing. Not anything else contrary to that because that's off and that's not a daughter of Zion and that's not love. That person is definitely walking in the flesh. So the woman, again, should treat her with love, love, love because we say that all day long. I love you, sis. You know, you love the most high, but you're not keeping his commandments. His commandments is to te is to love her, to love her as, to love thy neighbor as thyself. So just as you would want that sister to love you and treat you with respect and, 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 you know, uplift you, you should be doing the same thing. It shouldn't change because that sister, um, is coming into the household. So that sister has to check herself and get her mind right. All right, um, so uh, Mecca, what about you? Um, how should you treat the incoming sister wife? What about you? What you say? Um, <clears throat> well, you should be welcoming. You should be willing to get to know them. Um, you guys should talk a lot. Um, she should be open to bonding with you, um, teaching you the things of you know about their house um how to love her husband and her children you know if that is the situation how to take care of the home um the things that are required in um, their household um how the husband likes things to be ran how he likes you guys to dress how you know those things at, at that point um we all know our role as women and what we supposed to be teaching the younger sisters um just because <clears throat> it, it it says elder sister does not always mean age um the same things that we should be teaching the sisters on the street are what we supposed to be teaching the women that's coming into our household. So, Titus 2 still applies. Absolutely. Alright, Josiah, what about you? How should you treat the incoming sister wife? So, um, me personally, I would treat her the way I want it to be treated. Um, being coming into a polygynist marriage I know how nervous I was I know how I felt I know how I wanted I guess how I pictured <laughs> the their interactions which you know was beyond my imagination you know coming into this household so I would want her to feel as welcoming as I felt I would want her to know that she should you know that she can come and and um, talk to me. You want, you want to address her with an open spirit, meaning you can come off say, you know, show sis, how you doing, and be dry. You're having a conversation, but your your spirit is not welcoming. Mm. So she can feel your spirit like mm, she talking. To me. I'm just dealing with it. Yeah, yeah, and you can feel that. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> and <laughs> and that sister can feel that. She can sense that. You know, um, even if she's new into the truth or, you know, this, this is definitely her first run of collision, you can definitely come off as not a welcoming spirit. And you don't want to come off because not having, not being welcoming to a new sister definitely can cause some issues within that sister's life. And you have to think about that as well because not only is she... You know, we're like, well, I don't want to be married, or no, I want to do polygyny. But if this is what it's like, I don't want to be in the truth. Mm -hmm. Then you just lost the soul. So you have to be, you have to be mindful of the things you say, how you say it, and how it's addressed. So you definitely want to be welcoming. You want to welcome her and her children. If she has children, you want to, you, you know, you want to let her know and let her feel that she's a part of your family. And not bossy too. Yes, sir. I'm like, please say something on that because. Yeah, you know. Well, I'm the first wife, so <laughs> everything I say go. Yeah. 
Like, in our house, we don't have a hierarchy. You know, some men may may allow that, but in this household, it, no. We we, we on the same level. Forward, all yeah. the wives on the same level. Ain't one up here, ain't none down there. We we all on the same playing field. Yeah. We that gives people the big, big head. Yeah, we all got the same textbooks. We all got the same study guide, the same test, the same quiz. All that. It ain't it ain't different notations on nobody's stuff. Like, and we all get correction together. Dude. At the same time. <laughs> 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 so it's like when one of us mess up, we all mess up. We go we gonna feel it together. So yeah, you gotta and if you you know, for the 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 sirs or the the um the mm-hmm. gentlemen that do have hierarchies in your make sure that they're not trying to be the, the head. Mm-hmm. Because I'm because the wife don't have a help me. I'm not here to be her help me. <laughs> right. I'm here to be the help me to my husband. To aid him in what he needs. Not to aid my sister. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you help you your sister. Dishes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. That's funny. That was definitely called competition in the household. So, you definitely don't want that. <laughs> if you want me to be your child, just say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's funny. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> it says, uh, it just seemed like that they would be jealous that he took another wife. Perhaps she may be prettier, younger, or older. Or perhaps... Because they now have to divide up their time with this new woman. One, it doesn't matter why he took him as a wife. You know, stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. And you just embrace that sister and teach that sister how to be a daughter of Zion. How to love your husband. Um, Treat, again, I can say this all day. Treat her as you want to be treated. So, jealousy, you know, unfortunately, yes, some women in polygyny, you know, yes, they are jealous uh, of, of that sister when she comes into the household because she's not doing her job as a woman of the Most High. She's not focused on what she's supposed to be focused on as a, as a woman of the Most High. She's supposed to be teaching you how to be a Proverbs 31 woman, a Titus 2 woman, um, correcting you when you're off. Um, not when you think that she's off, but according to the scriptures. Um, so that sister, you know, if she's feeling jealousy, she needs to repent because she's not going to get into the kingdom. Ecclesiastes 26 and 6 does not condone jealousy. And, you know, so... Galatians 5 doesn't need Exactly. So she needs to repent and get her mind right for thinking of of some things like that. Oh, she may be prettier. She may be younger. It doesn't matter. That man saw fit what he saw fit. And he wanted to bring her into the household. So it doesn't matter if she's prettier. That's something that you need to get. And that's something you need to get um, corrected. Because one, you being pretty doesn't mean anything. That's mm-hmm. vain. A woman who's worship and, and praised the most high, she's going to be praised. Mm-hmm. So... A little Proverbs 31. Yeah. Speaking of that, they did a video, this one right here, on YouTube.com. says House of Judas. I don't know if you can see this. They can zoom in. But it's called The Role of a Woman Slash Wife. I don't know if you're able to see that, but it's this video here. All right. Who's next? Okay, so flipping the shoe on the other foot, the sister that's coming in you definitely shouldn't have that mindset because this is what this is what the question or the statement is saying that what if she's jealous because i'm prettier i'm younger i'm older you definitely shouldn't have the now your mind is focused on on the wrong thing and when your mind is focused on the wrong thing it's going to show off in your spirit and then you're going to have those sisters reacting towards your spirit and then their spirit's going to be off so it is a domino effect it is a triple effect so you you yourself have have to come into the situation with the positive mindset like I'm gonna love these sisters I'm gonna embrace these sisters even if even if they don't give you the same love in return you're gonna show that man why he chose you in the first mm. place so you want to love on him I mean love on your sisters love on her children show them the same love and kindness and respect that you would want them to show you and then 
you know, like I say, even if it's not given in return, a man will weed out and see who's not who's call, causing chaos in his home, and he would deal with that person accordingly. Mm -hmm. So if that's you, then it's you. But if it's the sister that's been there, then it's that sister that's been there. But you can't come in with a, a defeatist mindset. Oh, they're just gonna be mad because I'm I didn't I'm the oldest. I did, I'm the oldest out of us. I didn't come in with that mindset. Oh, I'm older. No, not at all. So you got to come in with that mindset that I'm gonna be loving. I'm going to cherish my sisters. I'm going to treat them like they my best friends on this earth, like they my blood sisters, and, and go to bat for them for whatever. No matter if they're giving me the same love in return, I'm definitely going to give that love. And then eventually, that love is going to they're gonna see that love is genuine. And, and they're going to change their attitude. They're they going to come around. And then if they don't, the husband will definitely see that. And he would deal with that accordingly. Absolutely. eventually that love is going they gonna see that love is genuine and, and they're gonna change their attitude they, they gonna come around and then if they don't the husband will definitely see that and he would deal with that accordingly absolutely i feel like they answered it already like they taking all the good answers like i literally had, we gonna let you go first had, no no it's all good but i literally had that all written down so they they took my answers it's all good Next well week. i guess um kind of a bit of a sort of a curveball this is one i hear too as well um like uh even with uh with myself you know there have been women who i've been courting if i choose to call them text them whether if it's 10 in the morning 10 at night two in the morning or two in the afternoon or even go and see them mm -hmm. sometimes they may feel like well i don't want to be disrespectful to your wives or i don't want to seem like i'm rude or if i'm being selfish mm -hmm. and i'm hogging up your time it's bad enough that you already have three wives um but if if basically i don't want to cause any confusion i don't want them upset with me i don't want to make it seem like that i'm overstepping my boundaries mm -hmm. uh, i guess i'll let you go first <laughs> that's a nice sentiment We don't care. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, my husband is going to do what he's going to do regardless. So, <laughs> as far as time, I, I know it, it seems like if y'all had, like, if there was a system, because some people, the system works for them. Um, Not this hot Yeah, we, we don't have a system. So our husband does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. That How goes he for wants time, to do it. conversation, uh, spending time, text messages, phone calls, and all the above. He he's gonna talk to who he wants to talk to, and he's gonna be around who he wants to be around when he sees fit and when he feels like it. Um, none of us have say so in that because we're not. He's not ours. We are his. So. How he deals with us, he deals with us accordingly. So what about you, Judy? You're the first wife. How do you feel about that? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the same, you know, it's like my sister said, I really don't care. That's something that, you know, I have more, not saying that my husband is not important, but I have far more important things to kind of worry about mm -hmm. as my salvation. Facts. Um making sure that the household is still ran, you know, smoothly, making sure the children is okay. Um, just because my husband wants to, you know, <laughs> see another woman outside the household, like that, if I was to dwell on that and worry about that, I'd be sitting there in the flesh all day long. You know, just like these women of the world are. They be worried about what their husband, their man Go doing on, and going off through his phone and popping up on him and just doing all this crazy stuff. Like, no, I have... I have, you know, when my husband's not here, I have my sisters that I'm with. You know, we're going to watch a movie. We're going to chill. We're going to, you know, get into these scriptures. I'm going to 
um, you know, chill with the children. Get like your glass of wine. <laughs> that. How you skip that? <laughs> I was trying to exclude that, but, you know, my little glass of wine, you know, just chill, you know, so, no, I'm not, I'm not about to worry about it. I was just sitting there waiting for it. I'm like, oh, she didn't even mention You know, I'm going to have my glass of wine and I'm going, I'm going to chill, you know, I'd rather, fruits of the spirit. I'm going to say in the fruits of the spirit, I'm not going to be in the, in the flesh, you know, uh, causing strife and. You know, being envious. I'm envious of that sister. I don't even know her, but because he's with her, I feel some type of way. Yeah, I feel some type of way. No, I'm going to stay in the spirit. and I, You have to stay in the spirit. Like, I have to stay in the fruits of the spirit. So that's so, not cheating, though? No. What? I haven't read that in the Bible nowhere. So you mean to tell me he can talk to whoever he wants and that's not cheating and you're not mad? No. Girl, you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they think. Josiah, what about you? I know you mad. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't care. Um, I'm not, we, we're, we're not the type. We don't call and check on him when he gone. When he gone, he gone. He calls and checks on us. I... Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Yeah, we yeah. have to check in. Like we, he don't, we, he don't check in with us. We, we check in with him. <laughs> so, man, I, what's his curfew? Huh? <laughs> you hear that too? I, I've, I've curfew? been, ha- I've been asked that. Yeah, do you have a curfew? Oh, you know, because you, you would some think some women. Well, if you gonna be out, then I'm gonna be out. So <laughs> yeah. we gotta be home by a certain time. Well, you can't be coming up in here at two, three, or four in the morning. Yeah, something like that. They like, you know. I know you got to have a curfew if you got more than one wife. Like, man. Ain't no way around it. Oh, you got a curfew. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm not his mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't even know what man would even be willing yeah, to do Yeah, I don't do know. That. Even if you was monogamous, I wouldn't even expect a man to, oh, I got to be at home, man. My wife said. Yeah. That's a noodle <laughs> back if I ever heard it. Like, that is a... I, me personally, it's a huge turn off. I, I just don't want no man that I can control and is going to bend and bow to my every whim. And that's just, I just, I can't do it. I, I can't get, can't get down with no man I can run over. It's just, it's just not in me. It's just not appealing to me. So no, I really, I, if whoever he talks to is whoever he talks to. I don't, I'm not the type that sit up in his face and like who he texted and I never. Right, looking at your phone. I, I've been with. <laughs> trying to see his passcode. Looking I've been, in the, uh, the light <laughs> for the smudges. <laughs> <laughs> I've been with my king almost five years and out of those five years, I have never, ever questioned him. And he's like, what are you doing? I say nothing. I never ask. Thanks. What are you doing? Thanks. I've I've never ever done out of the almost five years. I've never questioned him facts. at all. Those are facts. I, I can I can test those are facts. Those are facts. So I will not start now. Right. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. You all survive the curveball. See if I throw another in there. <laughs> it says, uh, what should. Uh, it's kind of redundant here. It says, what should the co-wives do to assure that the new nervous co-wife that's now coming in that her husband has took? You know, so what should she do to assure, I guess to assure her that, you know, every, I guess in the, is every, everything's going to be okay or, yeah. you know, or, you know, we're not here to hurt you or, you know, make you drink some red Kool-Aid. <laughs> 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 so I think there's two answers to that one. And the only reason I say that because you have two different sides of the story. You have a, a polygynous family who's brand new, so it's only one wife. And then you have one that's more experienced that has multiple already. So it's some, some success there already. So I think there's two answers to, this, to that particular question. But I think both of them should come back to the common goal is to be loving, be friendly, be warm, and embrace. And smack the shit out of it. No. 
because then you have confrontation, then you, have, you got two women fighting, and then right. somebody going to get shot. That's strife, mm-hmm. variance, that's all the flesh. Mm-hmm. So don't do slap. that. No, don't no. Okay, well, don't, don't take my advice on that, guys. No slapping. No slapping. Um, again, you just reassure her that, you know, um, we, we law keepers. Um, I fear God. I keep his commandments. You know, I'm going love you again like I want to be loved how I want to be treated um, I'm gonna show you how our household is ran you know I'm gonna f- focus on the bigger picture um, so you know just try to make her less nervous than she already is you know because if the shoe was on the other foot you know you will want to be you will want someone to comfort you when you're feeling nervous you know because this is something different you know, never we've polygyny is something that our it's our culture. So we're coming back to this. Not everybody knows how mm. you know polygyny is ran. So mm. you have to just jump out there and just get to know one another. No different than how you get to know, you know, when you go to work and you meet a coworker and y'all vibe and you like, hey, and y'all get to know each other. It's no different. You have to keep that flesh out of it because she is um, you know, courting or dealing with your husband. So again, just reassure her that everything's gonna be okay. You know, I love you, sis. I'm gonna get to know you and love your children, and we gonna make this work. So that's the only way to make her less make make her feel less nervous. You wanna you don't want to make her feel more nervous than she already is. Absolutely, I definitely, I definitely like that. All right, who's next? Me. However, mm-hmm. all the answers have already been said. <laughs> Again. No, it's, um, it's one more. I mean, ultimately, ultimately, when, when I, they just gave y'all the sentimental, right? <laughs> ultimately, when you are coming into a household or there's another woman coming into the household, the main focus is your husband. And remember that we are striving to be like-minded to our husbands. We, our job as women is to be helpmates for our husbands. Um, we are not supposed to be stressing them out or making their life difficult. So if you know that he wants this woman and he is trying to bring this woman in, why would you make it hard for her? Well, that woman's your friend or your best friend. Even better. That's right. a plus. That's even better. I, I mean, and you, see, and you see, I tried to throw that. And you see, I tried to throw that curveball in there. Y'all didn't work. That's what? even better. Like, oh, if I only they the would, you know. Yeah, so. that's even better. It's like, hey, y'all, hey, y'all been friends for her ten years, y'all. She cool as a fan. Yeah. She gon' she gon' ride. Gonna ride right she gon' in here. So no worries. I love her. Like, she oh, got okay, love cool. too, man. No I can vouch. I can vouch for her. She she good. Yeah. She good. But I know. But we can't talk. I know your wife. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then the, um, Judith's answer is basically for a first wife. Mm-hmm. For the wives and like me and, and Mecca's situation that we've been here before, there have been ones after us. In those situations, you have to come in with a better mindset. You can't be thinking about well what if they do like the last one did and just yeah. you know you can't keep that negative mindset you have to be renewed and forget about what was what was once done and move past that and, and come in with the mindset okay well make, this sister's gonna make it you Ooh, know it's growth. so you know, for the wives that have experienced that you can't also you can't you can't falsely charge this woman for something somebody else there you go yeah because in, in all fairness if you because think about it no matter if we're, if we're talking the ones that didn't make it to the ones who are already in the household that could have done things even better that's growth that should be growth on both sides you know whether the the women who didn't make it say yo okay i'll learn from this experience i'll either never do that again or i'll do it again or there's some things I could have done better or, you know, I felt that could have been done better. It's, it's called growth. Everybody should grow on both ends, you know, and everybody should heal. So, you know, no matter which side it is, it's growth, you know, and that's the main thing that should be the focus, you know, like, okay, well, 
how do I grow from this? You know, what did I learn from the experience? Whether if it was bad or whether if it was good. You know, um, what can I do better? You know, it's like self accountability first. You know, and you grow. You live, you learn, and you grow. You know, so on both ends, no matter what. You know, and pray for another, one another as well. You know, anybody else want to say something? Okay. Um, so, um, I already, well, I'll just read it again. What should the co wives do to assure that the new nervous wife that's now coming in that their husband has took? How should this play out if one has a different personality than the other? For instance, uh, one may be quiet and another may be laid back, but I may be outgoing and louder than the other wives and our personalities may not match because of how we are. That's kind of like with you all, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, um, you can go ahead and go first because they take all the answers. Yeah, they do take all the answers. So everybody is different. Nobody is exactly the same. Uh, Josiah touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, although we are so different, there's something about us that our husband finds similar. However, we all came from different backgrounds. We are completely different. Um, just because you are different doesn't mean that you can't bond. Mm -hmm. And just because one person's personality is this way and the other's personality is this way doesn't mean that you guys can't have a relationship. Sometimes people who are the most different click the most. Man. Um, because everybody brings something different to the table. There are some things that I would see and I would understand that Josiah or Judith won't. So we all can see different, you know, perspectives of everything. So don't let that, you know, push you away just because somebody seems different. Um, because sometimes that, that difference. It is a blessing. Mm. All right. Um, Cherry, you go ahead. I agree. Um, everybody is different, you know, and that can also be like an excuse. Like, my personality is different. Her personality is different. She's, you know, we we definitely, we can't, we can't get along. Yeah. We mm -hmm. have nothing in common. We have nothing in common. <laughs> no. You walk in the fruits of the spirit and that person walk in the fruits of the spirit. There's no excuse. Come on with it. <laughs> I've said this to women before. There's no, there's no excuse. So if you walk in love and joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness, temperance, then it, it holds nothing. There's nothing else that that yeah. will come in between that. And that is Galatians chapter five, or twenty two and twenty three. Right. So if you come into it being yourself and being loving and joyous and that person the same, like y'all will again at the end of the day, the Most High puts you in that situation for a reason. So, do his will, delight in it, and walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you never know what what will happen after that. You know, if you go in there negative, negativity is going to happen. You're going to walk in the flesh. So, walk in the fruits of the Spirit, get to know one another, and you never know. That's right. Don't walk in with negative spirit, you might get smacked. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop Oh, so we can smack them. No. <laughs> no. Keep your hands to yourself. Right. Get your pocket. Right. Because you probably get your ass beat. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why be in there, Polly? <laughs> Polly, get your ass whipped. <laughs> Go ahead, Josiah. Your turn. This is why Polly mad. <laughs> Polly about to turn this video off. <laughs> you gotta okay. So it, this goes back to what I what I said earlier. When you it's like when you're in, in preschool and kindergarten, you meet somebody for the first time. Y'all personalities are not the same. Uh, case in point, me and my best friend, 30 years, I, we are night and day. I didn't think we will, you know. But it's the same thing coming to a household. Um, take our, take me and my sisters, for example. I'm definitely quiet and I'm an introvert. 
Mac is quiet and introvert as well. Judy's an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Let's call that. Let's call it ambivert. 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 Yeah. yeah. Ambivert. I feel a- like I'm ambivert. A m uh uh uh-huh. yeah a m b i v e r t. Yeah. So it's, it's basically uh like I, I'm like that too. You Maybe know? when it's like I'm tip. like I'm very much an extrovert. I'm an extrovert yeah. when when I can win. Yeah, I'm I'm very much an extrovert, but I know like if, if people don't understand me, sometimes y'all know because you know y'all been around me. Sometimes I have that mood to where I just want to be all to myself. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to talk to um um to anybody. It's not that it's personal, you know what I'm saying? It's just that it's it's my way of recharging. It's my way of doing my own thing. So people are like, dang, Jude, I ain't heard from you. It's nothing personal. It's just that I'm I'm a bit of an ambivert. So sometimes. I'll just go off in my corner. You won't find me. I'll find you. You know what I'm saying? If you and it's never nothing personal. It's just it's just how I've always been. Is how I always dealt with things. You know what I'm saying? So um, sometimes I, I just don't feel like being an extrovert. I may just feel like being an introvert. You know, and go off and study and do my own thing. I'll come out of my little hole and be like, Yo, Judah, where you been at, bro? I know you've been with your wives and everything, but they ain't heard from you. Well, there's nothing personal. I probably was in my introvert mood. I, it's just what it is. You know, so, you know, but we all had it in common, you know. And sometimes sisters don't confuse that with attitude. Don't confuse that with, I don't, uh, I just feel like that uh, I, I don't belong here. I don't feel like that she wants me. That's her sister wife, you know, if you will, you know. So you got to learn your sister. Learn learn how it is, you know, Um you know, so it's 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 like a, a trees in the forest. You know, you got tr- different trees, and you know, just stay in your tree. You know, keep your uh, root. You know, planted in the ground. Don't tip over and knock her tree over, if you will. Anybody else want to say something? Yeah, she's a finish. Go ahead, my man. Polly should have finished. <laughs> you know. Well, basically, that's all we just said. Go ahead. <laughs> so. Right, because you know. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Go ahead, I'm going to let you talk. All right, now go ahead. So being in, coming into a situation like that, you want to basically, for real, find out how how can you mesh well with these women. Um, Judith to be quiet. Sometimes me and Mecca, even though we're introverts, we can be loud at home, and and you know, especially when being competitive. Well, nine times out of ten, we're on the same team. Yep. Now tell them what and that means, competitive. Oh, see, I knew they was. What do you mean so by competitive? We play a lot of games. Play games. Oh, see, they be playing games. <laughs> board games. Yeah, board games. Board Bible, games. Je- Bible Jeopardy. Truth <laughs> of God. The Wii. The Wii. Like just the Uno. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever the kids want to do. We, we, you know, sometimes it's adults versus kids, but most times I see me and Mecca wind up on the same team. adults versus kids. And, what you, and, and what's the games. game Judy be playing? She play all of them. No, nah, the game that she <laughs> plays. I haven't played uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yeah, she plays Call of Duty, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> like she plays, plays the game. So you have to, <laughs> you actually have to find stuff. We, uh, we've had sisters come in and it was really into video games. I'm not, but <laughs> I showed interest. Yeah. You know, because that's something that that sister was into. Yeah, Judy so, wants me to find a woman that can play uh, Call of Duty. I can play, play Call of Duty. I just don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, she wants my dick to actually play. Yeah, that does. I, just don't, I just don't like it very much. Exactly. So, so that's not what she's looking for in a sister. I, yeah, she's so you just hard. don't fit the bill. Yeah, I like zombies, though. I play zombies, but yeah. it goes too fast around, like, level five. <laughs> level five is over. No, I play racing games, fighting games, but I don't, I don't kill it and I, that ain't that. I mean, yeah, but I'll play with it. Playing, boy. Yeah, I'll I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to find them clips that you played when we were out of town. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that on here.
Judy, Judy, huh? what's she playing? Call me Judy. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think you have a problem playing this. What game is that? Aim and, and shoot. What game is that? Call of Duty. Call of Duty. You gotta, you gotta come into that mindset that you, you are and find ways for. I remember, I remember we, uh, I printed out some sheets and we just did a questionnaire and really got to know each other. I, I just printed out a list of questions and we just got to explaining ourselves and what we like and what we didn't like and just learning something new about each other. So you just gotta find common ways to to do it, but you also have to be a willing participant at that. That's true. Can I ask something? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, even, with that being said, though, uh, remember that we also have to show patience. Because um, sometimes we come into the situation with expectations as in as if everything is going to go smooth. Yeah. And it doesn't. <laughs> um, we have to have the patience to see that sometimes people are... Um, the way they love is different from the way that you love. Um, and sometimes it's hard for people to let people in. So uh, just like you're getting to know your new new household, your new household is also getting to know you. Um, so, you know, show it, be long suffering and be temperate, you know, give them a chance because even though it may not be as new for them, you are still a new person for them, Facts. you know. So everybody is getting to know everybody. Absolutely. All right. Um. So the next thing we have is um. Let's see. Where are we at? Oh, is there a method that the sister wives could do, or is there something that can be set into place? For the new incoming wife that the husband saw fit to bring in. So, go ahead. Um, is it, this is more of a you question, though? Um, Just because it's coming from the husband. Um, let me see. Let me go there. Uh, is there a method that the sister wives could do? Or is there something that could be set into place for the new incoming wife? Um, that the husband's, I mean, that, that, that can vary, you know, each man is different, so, you know, how he may run his house and it'll be totally different from mine, you know, so that's, that would be a question that I would, and we all may have different answers, even you all, I would just recommend you ask the, the brother who you may or may not, you know, who you may be courting, you know, may be interested in, you know, and just see what he says off that, you know, but something like that could vary. You know, even with me, if I'm courting a woman, if I'm courting more than one woman, that, it can be different. It's like it's not a, like a set method for me. You know, um, expect the unexpected. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you know, so it's not a set method with me. You know, at least I don't think it's a set method for me. Kind of, sort of, not for real, but kind of, okay. sort of. Just to you a, may recognize something I don't. Just to a certain point, up okay. until like I don't know the getting to know you process. That isn't for us. But well, oh, you mean like. Well, once they're coming, yeah, I don't in. just bring them. I don't just ain't nobody just gonna come meet y'all. That just ain't happening, you know. Like even if I'm cool with the sister, for the most part, look, don't ask me to meet my wives. Like that really ain't happening, you know. The circumstances may be it may differ, but it, it ain't based off how you know how cool I am with you, you know. But um, me personally. I need to see if 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 I can see if I can if, if I can if, if if I can see you in the household if I can't at least see that 
that just ain't happening, you know. But again, it, it may vary with me, you know. I don't know. Maybe you all can point out something that I ain't mentioning or something. I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm I'm speaking of up and th- after the point of you deciding that there's a chance that they gonna come into the house. Um, once you decide that you want us to meet, then it's like okay, well we meet, and then we have to bond. Um, we all talk to them individually or whatever and develop our own relationships and then it like progress to everybody talking together and everything is communicated to everyone and stuff like that so I mean up until after that point of you deciding okay well maybe she will be a fit for the house then it's like okay well everybody got a bond what we gonna do? Go to uh, karaoke or go out to eat. Y'all go out to eat these days and go to the movie these days and make sure that we talk every single day and you know. Right, being in communication with each other. And even then, even how I even have y'all meet, like I have y'all meet at, at random. You know, it, it literally, it can be at random. Like um, Mecca, when you met yeah, <laughs> when you met you, I was so happy them first couple of times because I would go and I have on like, you know, night clothes. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Well, I was gonna let you meet him, but you ain't dressed." So I was like, "Woo!" <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm big on first impressions, you know. So, but when it was time for you to meet, I'm like, "Uh, well, you can meet him right now." You know, so. Was it our first? When was our first time meeting? Um, was that when you came before? before? It was. Right before Tabernacles, the day before Tabernacles, y'all was gonna go to Tabernacles. Well, we'll go down memory lane later. <laughs> y'all go. Next. <laughs> like, Juju was small, you was still sleepy, you went back to the back and laid down. Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, great, memory lane. Next. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else want to chime in on that? Everything was said? Okay. All good. All right, so, um, yeah, so again, just ask the person that you're interested in or you're interested in you and again that may vary you know everybody is different all right so don't just take our answer and be like oh this is how it's supposed to be yeah. it can vary all right so here we go um the next part said this is uh for the new co-wife that's coming in and she may have children and she may have concerns coming in so again, that might be a sister that might be like, yo, well, you know, I got these kids and, you know, I'm used to loving my child and caring for my child and being there for my child. Nobody going to love my child like me, you know, um, what if she don't like me or, you know, the abuse or, you know, we got to deal with pedophilia, things like that, you know, these are things that obviously a parent will be thinking and may be concerned coming in, you know, because nobody, she's looking at it, you know, nobody's going to love my child like me, you know, coming from a monogamy point of view, it's, it can be slightly different, you know, versus coming in a open polygynous dynamic, you know, so uh, anybody want to chime in on that, this is definitely dealing with a concerned parent uh, coming in, and you know, once again, she said this is for the new co-wife that's coming in, and she may have children, and she may have concerns coming in. So she got concerns. I mean, it's my kid. Yeah. All right. So, from my, I guess from my experience, most women, not this is just my experience. Um, not saying it's across the board, but from my experience, most women that have concern when it comes to their children is because their kids bad. Meaning, I mean, I know my kids act this way, or they gonna be like, nah, she can't come in because my my kids bad. That's, that's the only time I, I see that happen. <laughs> I never looked at it like that. <laughs> <laughs> or no, or or she will have considered doing something to somebody else's kids. That too. It's one or the other. That too. Well, that all of us good answers because, you know, somebody could be thinking what you're thinking and thinking what you're thinking. Yeah, most, most women, or you know, they can have that, ma- that negative mindset because you know your kids is bad. You know your kids going to turn some stuff up. Like, these people got a nice house. My kids going to turn all this up. Ooh, Ooh I'm scared. If they don't let me in. You know, so yeah. she, she she has a negative mindset. Um, 
So I, I do think the most high that I didn't have a negative mindset coming in because I actually had faith in my the man that that was courting me had my best interest at heart, had my children's best interest at heart. So I knew that he wouldn't have them in an unsafe environment, if mm, that makes sense. Yeah. So because he didn't have them in that type of environment when it was just me and him before he introduced me to the the wives. So you build that bond is you build that bond with your king or I'm sorry, the man you're courting first because most people nowadays they want to get quick fix marriage and get married in two seconds versus actually courting somebody to see if you even a perfect a, a good fit for him. Cause he, you, you might think that, oh man, you know, he's trying to see if you're a good fit for him. You should be doing the same thing, trying to see if he's a good fit for you. Because you get a lot of sisters that get into these marriages, and then two seconds later, he, he didn't, he didn't corrected her, and then I, I, I'm leaving. And then you just broke your marriage because you didn't court and you didn't get to know this man. Right. So I would tell that. So I would definitely tell that sister, make sure you know who you're marrying before you marry them. And uh, you know, make sure he's having your your children's best interests at heart. Right, and then at this point, <clears throat> if if the children is coming in at this point, everybody should be more than likely got to know each other. So everybody's familiar with each other. I probably stole your answer. Yeah, a little bit. Go ahead. But on the off chance that y'all don't know each other, right? At, at that point, if you are considering coming into a marriage, um. Everybody should be looking at it like these are our kids. So, I mean, if you are already coming into a house, you know, everybody should be looking at your children as their children because you are also coming into the house. So. Um, just to piggyback on what she said, um, like that's that. what... Land back. Yeah, land back. <laughs> we don't do no more. <laughs> but um, that's what I, don't I was. Know, but you show sure said Biggie back. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's what I was gonna say. You know, um, you know, when I came, I got for myself when I came into the situation. You know, my son was like two years old. Situation. <laughs> he was two years old. So you know, in the back of my mind, I didn't really have. I didn't really have any issues, you know, like, oh, they're going to treat him some, this type of way. Or, because we was around him when he was a baby. You gotta be yeah, so, um, again, again, when, you know, think of it as, you know, treat, again, treat others how you want to be treated. You wouldn't want your your children treated any kind of way or any less than or um anything like that so if a sister is coming to the household you know embrace those children love those children nurture those children train those children up as if they were your children so it wouldn't leave any room for anybody to think any kind of way or to you know see i knew she was going i knew she couldn't stand my child i knew she couldn't i knew all this stuff so if you love that child as if that was your own child you wouldn't feel no kind of way Right, because again, even here it says she may be nervous if they would accept her children and accept who she is in the dynamics. You know, so you know they might feel like, oh, my kid might not get accepted. No, love that child. Don't we? These are all your children now. You came in with one. I had five. You got six now. <laughs> so you know, just love that child and nurture that child and train that child up because, you know, children, they, you know, they adapt more to the dynamics than we do. That is true. That, so that is, That's definitely true. I've, I've experienced that, so I can definitely testify to that. That's definitely true. Yeah. Um, they were more accepting of it than most adults I know. Mm -hmm. So. Speaking of kid, it says right here, she's like the new kid on the block. And she may feel that it would be a click formed. Everyone against her. Can you all talk about this? What um what's the word that uh means clicks? <laughs> no, for seditions? real. Yeah, in Galatians mm -hmm. five. Yeah, seditions. A part of the flesh oh, part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it should be no click. This is not the bad girls club. No click. <laughs> this is not clicks. mean girls. Yeah. We can't sit with us. You can sit with us every day. <laughs> it shouldn't be any click. 
So <sighs> I, I get the concern though, but it shouldn't be any clicks. Yeah. Red flag if you see clicks. Absolutely flag no. Flag on the yard. <laughs> flag on the yard. For real. <laughs> the only click, the only click will be you. The household. The facts. Against another household. Yeah, yeah. Your household against another one. That's yeah. the only click. Not against one another. Not not negatively against one another. Yeah. Okay. Like, no, I'm talking about click. the household, yeah. not against each other. That's not how I am with this sister wife, but I don't know about that other one, though. Like, we a click, and then when somebody come in, they gonna be a part of our click. They can join our hey, game. Come yeah. on over here. Right. Right. Don't sit with the house. <laughs> right. Yeah. You all over there. You're not come gonna over be, here with the house. You're not gonna be titled House of Judah and other wife. Right. Right. No. Ain't nobody coming to see you, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> So it ain't that title. You you come once you come in, you you're part of the group. You're part of the clan. So I'ma call it David Ruffin in the Temptations. <laughs> <laughs> and only only way it should be called that is your your husband's name and his house. That's definitely one of the uh uh lusts of the flesh that's spoken about in Galatians five uh uh seditions, which is a, a disunion, a uh, a division. So when you call them disunion not unity, but disunion. You know, when you're causing a, a division, you know, uh, a dissension, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely, definitely not something that you would want to even experience or something that you would want to do or even think about, you know. If you're dealing with polygyny, you know, that, that's the last thing that should be on anybody's mind, you know. Again, and brothers, this also goes into... Um, I don't want to use the term force in polygyny, but basically um, trying to get a woman who is not into it, into it. You know, if this is not something that she wants to do, it could cause that disunion. It could cause that dissension or that division. Why? Because she don't really want to be there. You know, so it's best to just find women who are open to it. Or, you know, she, because, you know, you get some that might not be open to it out of ignorance. They don't know. You know, not because of jealousy because she just don't know she don't understand you know that's another reason why we have this channel because she may get to see you all but like, oh well I never really tripped it like that i just thought the man got more than one wife supposed to be threesomes and orgies you know that's, that's what i thought you know some think that you know so but then when they see you all it's like yo well, i never heard it from this point of view like wow you know so yeah anybody else want to say something on that all right so yeah so but anyway, um, it says, um, well, yeah, so yeah, you all shed a light on this, right? All three of you all did? Okay, great. Um, so it says, um, here's the next part. Um, can each of you give advice about this? Yeah, okay, what if he took, let's just say, three wives coming in? How and what should the co-wives expect? And how and what can they do to welcome the sister wives into the household? So I'll read that one more time. What if he took, let's just say, three wives coming in? Um, how and what should the co-wives, yeah, how and what should the co-wives expect? And how and what can they do to welcome the sister wives, or all three of the sister wives into the household? Um, you should expect the exact same thing as you would if it was just one sister. Um, what should be done is the exact same thing as it would had it been just one sister. There is no, no changing of the routine because of the, the quantity of the women coming in. It's all the same. All the same. Everything that Judith said, everything that Josiah said is all the same. You love your sister. You know, treat them how you want to be treated. Um, be open. Be willing. All of this still applies regardless say if it's one or it's 50. It still applies. <clears throat> I agree. She kind of summed it up because, you know, it doesn't matter if it's three women or if it's five women or if it's ten women. You know, you still should be, you should you still should embrace those sisters. You know, show them the ropes as far as how your your household is ran, the things that your husband likes and what displeases him. 
um, teaching each other, Titus, teaching those women Titus too, and how she's supposed to be as a woman of the Most High, and if she has children, mm-hmm. embracing those children and loving those children. So it don't go out of the window because of how many women are coming to the household. It only it only matters to those women who see those women coming in because they feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that matters. Um, but other than that, it don't matter how many women are coming in. You still are supposed to love them how, you know, tr- and treat them how you would want to be treated. Or if you were one of those three women coming into the household. I think the only thing that would go through, that would, well, should go through anyone's mind when they face in the situation. What kind of car are we going to get so everybody can fit the car? Facts. <laughs> Pacifica is a good one. Depending on depending on how many kids y'all got. So, if I it's seven of y'all, you'll fit just fine. Yeah, and you kind of denial yourself. Because for us, yeah. for on the other hand, three more? Woo! Yeah, we going to need... We, on, we need we two you kind. No, we no we, we need getting a bus. The, uh, we, we getting get a twelve passenger van. That's yeah. what we gotta get the twelve passenger van. That's gonna be the house house car. Fast we go somewhere. That's the only thing that that really I guess go through our our minds. Okay, it's, it's okay not, so how we all gonna go somewhere? So yeah, we how we like, we got two we got a car cars, seat. We got a, two a car seat. seats. Yeah, yeah. so that's. I think that's the, that's what goes through our mind. It ain't, oh my God, he finna bring somebody else and she go, no, well, what I kind of car she got? So who gonna get in the car? Yeah. Like, who, 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 who car, car you get in? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we gonna get it. We gotta get another car, y'all. Yeah, we need three we cars at this point. Then we gotta get, okay, let's let's see what we gonna put a room at. We gotta, we gonna right, make a room make at. Make room. Okay. That's, that's what goes through <laughs> our All mind. All these rooms already. <laughs> Which room do you like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's accommodating them sisters so everybody can fit comfortably. Everybody feels comfortable being around everybody. Everybody mentions, well, everybody getting along with everybody, joining in on the game nights, studies, movie nights, just even conversation. That's what we worry about when we get a new sister. Nothing, nothing negative, all positive. We look, we look for, we plan ahead. We plan for the future. Yeah, we look for houses with extra rooms just in case. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, did decide to yeah. bring two more in. We have enough room for them to fit hmm. into the house. Absolutely. And uh, I guess uh, another curveball. This is to the <laughs> Auntie Polly sisters. Not necessarily Auntie, but you know, you. I don't know. Maybe you all have thoughts, maybe you don't. You know, sometimes you may hear sisters say, um, well, your wives let you talk to other women. See, uh, <laughs> see, my man can't talk to other women. You know, um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I don't like to. I don't like to share. You know, uh, I don't like to share my food, let alone my yeah. DIC kid. <laughs> we discussed this in previous videos. I've said it once. I've said it twice. I've said it three times. You gonna share whether you want to or not. Like at the end of the day, he gonna do it behind your back or in your face. You pick and choose. Facts. It's that's really it. it you decide which one you would prefer to be in the knowing or or not. Which one you actually got some that prefer both? I I decided I don't mind. When yeah. it Chris Brown and say these for everybody. Uh, right. <laughs> He's me for everybody. I'm just saying. <laughs> These men be for crazy. everybody. You know? My man Since my man is her time. man is your man yeah, is my right. man. That's, that's her. Since yeah. the beginning of the time. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> so at the end of the day, he gonna do it with or without your permission. Uh, uh, with, see, I just can't. You know what I mean? Well, you to just find. can't, and you gonna be in the corner crying because he just gonna do it. <laughs> so they always try to find a reason, but see, I just can't. I don't know if I could do that, or I don't know. I mean, it, it's so funny because honestly, if if women today really accept, well, shut the it, fuck up, oh, okay, no, no. that too. Uh, and, but if they really truly accepted the fact that polygyny. And I'm not even saying that you gotta coexist with your with your with your co wives. Y'all don't even gotta talk. But if you accepted the fact that your man wanted to talk to more than one woman, you will have husbands in the home. You will have fathers in the okay. home. You have help. You have help in the house. You have multiple incomes in the house. It it is so beneficial 
not only to you but to everybody involved, including the children. Speaking of business, I guess uh, it'd be the time to, uh, I guess, announce um, that um, I have a new business coming out um, a lot sooner than later. I'm getting everything prepared, getting all professional equipment, doing professional photography and videography. So uh, um, pretty soon you'll start seeing a lot more professional quality uh, type of videos and audio and things like that. So I'm still in the learning process of getting everything done, getting equipment, you know, even you see a little new lighting and, you know, um, uh, you know, so yeah, you'll start seeing that. And you know, um, it's coming, it's definitely coming. So. Um, I'll even be traveling as well, doing weddings, uh, you name it, um, baby showers, graduations, uh, parties, video shoots, you name it, you know, so um, I'm open to it all, so uh, you name it, it's, it's definitely going to get done, but that's something you will hear more about later, definitely still doing the oils, and ladies, yeah, I can talk about you all businesses, you know. Well, we have the skirts. Um, still pushing the skirts. You can um, see those on our Facebook page. It's House of Judah. Jewelry coming soon. Yes. And we also <laughs> have the lip gloss. We have Josiah's candles. We have Shamir's lip gloss. Mm -hmm. And Modestly Made Apparel. Absolutely. And um, if anybody is wanting to even donate, um, the cash shop is House of Judah. Yes, House of Judas. House of is the uh, the number Z. zero. Yeah, House zero F Judas. That's One like more it. time. What is it again? It's the House of Judas. <laughs> um, house uh, the number zero F and then Judas. House of Judas. And you can also sense it if you are looking to uh, book us all for counsel as well. You know what I'm saying so. Uh, and Please, because some people will just won't remember when we counsel people, what app do we do it on? Zoom. If we teaching or doing anything biblical, what app do we do it on? Zoom. Zoom. You know, so at least download the Zoom app. If you can't at least do that, or find somebody who got Zoom, have a quiet background, not noisy, of course. It's just not our time to talk yet, you know. So we do it all through Zoom. Um, definitely have an open mind um, and definitely be serious. Um, but uh, yeah, you can definitely send donations and um, um, definitely uh, watch the video about um, what do we name it on the channel? Um, like for those who are looking for counsel, uh, the name of that video on the YouTube channel is um, requesting H O J Polygyny Council Q and A. So that's a video we did a little over two months ago. Uh, requesting House of Judah Polygyny Council. Once again, it is this video right here. Right there. So watch that first before reaching out to us for counsel. All right. So um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are the House of Judah. So anybody want to say anything or add anything before we get up out of here? We got less than 60 seconds. Anything. Stand for the spirit. Endure, 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 endure. And be pleasing to your husband. It's submitted to him as unto the most high. So just remember when you sin against your husband, you sin against God. And as Juju say, close your mouth and endure, woman. Yeah. Submit, woman. Submit, woman. Submit, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Stay focused. We're here and we continue to grow. Yeah. And you know, and you know, the next sister that comes in as well, she'll get in, you know, she'll be able to bond, you know, with us and grow with us as well. But like I said, a lot of people 
you know, and it's, and I and I think the most high that's nothing that we've ever experienced where we be like, oh, y'all know, y'all just doing that for the camera. Yes, and, fake. And, and I, I'm not thank God that we never experienced that. Shabu! What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? This is Judah. You gotta talk to the... It's a B-L-B-Duction.